Martian whirlwinds typically come in the form of dust devils. A dust devil is a rotating column of dust. The Earth also gets dust devils, but they are much smaller than the ones found on Mars. These dust devils on Mars can get extremely tall. In this image is one that is about 20 kilometers tall. This was captured by NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Another image from the same orbiter is this one. This dust devil is much smaller compared to the previously shown one. This one is around 800 meters tall and about 30 meters wide. Dust devils are pretty frequent on Mars. It is estimated that millions of them occur each day on Mars. However, they are not scattered evenly. Some regions have far more than others. A good example of that is with two NASA's Martian twin rovers called Opportunity and Spirit that arrived on Mars in 2004. They both arrived at the equator, but around 9,000 kilometers away from each other. Opportunity arrived close to this huge formation filled with flow patterns. The rover did not encounter dust devils frequently at this location. This one image does indeed show a dust devil that the Opportunity rover captured, but this was not a common sight. The Spirit rover, on the other hand, arrived in the crater called Gusev. At this location, a bunch of dust devils were spotted. Here is some footage which showcases multiple dust devils passing close to the rover. This is one out of many encounters that it had. Something about this place just makes it have more dust devils compared to the place that the Opportunity rover landed on. Despite regional variation in frequency of these whirlwinds, they are still, overall, so incredibly frequent on Mars that a large percentage of the dust found in the air on Mars is due to dust devils. That quite possibly is also influencing the climate of Mars. This dust devil is about half a kilometer away from the rover, about 5 meters wide and at least 50 meters tall. This was captured by the Curiosity rover that arrived on Mars in 2012. The Perseverance rover that arrived in 2020 spotted a much larger dust devil, although it may even appear smaller than the previously shown one. That is still simply due to the fact that it is farther away. This one is 4 kilometers away from the rover. It is also about 60 meters wide and probably nearly 2 kilometers tall. Perseverance also captured the sound of a dust devil while one was passing over the rover. It sounds like this. The sounds are quite muted due to the Martian atmosphere being much less dense than Earth's. Sounds also travel slower on Mars than on Earth. And due to high carbon dioxide percentage, the lower pitched noises are more prevalent than higher pitched ones. Perseverance also captured gusts of wind lifting dust particles and also recorded the sound of regular winds. How large Martian dust devils are also goes along with how long they are present. Dust devils with a diameter of 700 meters last about 26 minutes, while 20 meter diameter dust devils last about 3 minutes. However, there are some rare and really large ones that can last for over an hour. Mars typically has a relatively thin coating of light-colored dust. So when a dust devil passes over an area, it lifts that thin coating and reveals the darker soil underneath. That is why these long dark streaks exist on Mars. They are tracks left by dust devils. These tracks can also get many tens of kilometers long. This image was taken by the Curiosity rover after it scooped up the soil. It reveals how incredibly fine the soil is. It's like a powder. And it clearly shows that the top dust-coated layer is significantly brighter compared to the deeper soil layer. This is why dust devils leave dark tracks. It is also interesting to note that the Martian dust particle is around 2 micrometers large. 
which is 0.0002 centimeters. So the width of very thin hair follicles is on average about 10 times larger than the diameter of Martian dust particles. The mechanism through which dust devils are formed on Mars is the same one as the way dust devils form on Earth. First the sun warms parts of the ground to a significant degree. Then, as the warm air starts to rise from the ground up, that creates a lower pressure environment compared to the rest of the atmosphere. Then from the surrounding atmosphere, which is the higher pressure environment, the air starts to rush into the lower pressure environment created by the heated ground. That air rushing in then starts to spiral and eventually it starts picking up dust particles. Eventually the pressure also equalizes as enough air rushes in and the dust devil dissipates. The mechanism is so well understood that they have been artificially recreated. The tracks are the reason behind why we know that dust devils are more common during spring and summer, and why it looks like they are more common in the southern hemisphere compared to the northern hemisphere. Track density gives some insight into how common they are in certain areas. It is estimated that overall about 14% of dust devils leave tracks. Because dust devil activity is estimated through the tracks, that can also lead to some imprecision, as some areas with a thick bright dust cover can have a lower percentage of dust devils leaving tracks. However, dust cover doesn't seem to be too influential on track formation. There are dusty regions with a significant amount of tracks and low dust regions with a small amount of tracks. Still, knowing the exact influence of dust cover on dust devil track formation would be useful for getting a more precise estimate of dust devil activity. Overall, it is estimated that each year dust devils lift about 230 billion kilograms of dust into the Martian atmosphere. To put that into some perspective, that is about three times more mass compared to the mass of the asteroid Bennu that is about 490 meters in diameter. This graph on the left side shows all the latitudes and the percentage of the surface that each 15 degrees of latitude cover. On the right side is how much dust is lifted by dust devils in kilograms per 15 degrees of latitude. It is clearly visible that the southern latitude is contributing the most to the atmospheric dust through dust devils. More specifically, between 45 and 75 degrees south is where 50% of all of the known dust lifting from dust devils is happening. It maybe is the case, however, that the lifting for the northern hemisphere is an underestimation, due to it having a thicker dust cover. But that is still uncertain because it is at least known that dust cover isn't too predictive of track density. The possible mechanism behind why the tracks are erased due to dust storms is because dust particles are so light they stay suspended in the atmosphere for quite a while after they are lifted. Eventually they start to drop down to the surface. That causes the darker surface with the soil to get coated in a layer of dust. Consequently, that also explains why the surface of Mars is coated with dust. However, because dust devils also lift dust particles into the atmosphere, that would mean that dust devils themselves also contribute to tracks being erased. In this graph, we can see how much dust is lifted by dust storms compared to dust devils. Dust storms annually lift around 580 billion kilograms of dust, which is about two times more than dust devils. Also, that number of 580 billion kilograms is for dust storms during a year where there isn't a global dust storm event, because a single global dust storm can lift 400 billion kilograms of dust alone. Another interesting thing is that the southern and the northern hemisphere are pretty similar in how much dust is being lifted due to dust storms. 
Although Mars doesn't get the incredibly powerful and destructive storms such as tropical cyclones, it instead gets global dust storms. Compared to tropical cyclones, they are much weaker in terms of lifting ability. But when it comes to surface area, dust storms dwarf tropical cyclones. Global Martian dust storms engulf pretty much the entire planet, which means that they then cover a surface area of about 144 million kilometers square. So basically, these dust storms cover a surface area that is nearly equivalent to the surface area of the entire dry land on Earth. Land on Earth covers a surface area of 148 million kilometers square. The rest, which is most of the surface, is just water. Typically, however, dust storms on Mars stop growing once they reach a local or a regional area. Still, sometimes the storm does indeed grow enough such that it engulfs the entire planet. A good example of that is the 2001 global dust storm that started in the Hellas Basin. This image was captured by the Hubble Space Telescope. The image of Mars on the left is before the storm appeared. The one on the right is when the global dust storm was present. The airborne dust particles obscure the view of the surface so heavily that barely any features can be recognized. Mariner 9 is the first spacecraft to orbit another planet. Before that, there were flyby missions, but no orbiters. When the Mariner 9 spacecraft reached Mars in 1971, the planet was experiencing a global dust storm. That obviously caused a problem for the orbiter, since it couldn't image the surface of Mars properly. However, the peak of Olympus Mons, the tallest planetary mountain, was still visible. That means that these global dust storms get to be around 20 kilometers tall. Global Martian dust storms appear usually once every five Earth years, so they are not super uncommon. In fact, they pose a danger to rovers already. In 2007, both Spirit and Opportunity rover were on Mars during a global dust storm that lasted for at least a month. Although both rovers were in quite a bit of trouble, the region that the Opportunity rover was in was especially bad when it comes to the amount of dust that was in the atmosphere. This image from Opportunity shows how over the course of 30 Martian days, the visibility dropped dramatically. All of these photos were also taken around the same time of the day, but on the image that is the most to the right, it almost looks like it is nearly night. That is because on that day, about 99% of the sunlight was blocked due to the dust particles. Because Opportunity is largely solar powered, it was getting many times less energy than it needed, and that started to drain its battery. Because of that, driving and many other functions were suspended until the storm cleared. Although it did survive that global dust storm, nearly 11 years later, in 2018, a massive dust storm appeared which made the Opportunity rover unable to send any signals back to Earth, as it received too little energy. Even after the dust storm settled, it wasn't able to communicate, and the mission ended. Also, that dust storm lasted for several months. The Spirit rover, on the other hand, stopped working way earlier, in 2010, due to being stuck in soft sand. All of its power reserves were then used up in order to make the rover free, but the rover stopped operating because of that. The newer Curiosity and Perseverance rovers, on the other hand, aren't endangered by dust storms because they are not solar powered. Instead, they are nuclear powered, and both of them still have plenty of energy left for many years to come. Still, everything that is solar powered is endangered by dust storms, because they can not only lower the energy output from the sun due to blocking sunlight in the atmosphere, but they can also coat the solar panels in dust and make them unable to receive sunlight. Another example of that, besides the Opportunity rover, happened to the InSight lander that landed on Mars in 2018. 
Over time, it accumulated enough dust such that by 2022, it wasn't able to communicate and the mission ended. The wind speeds of dust storms on Mars are at best around 100 km per hour, which, although sounds somewhat strong, is actually much weaker than it might seem at first glance. That is because the Martian atmosphere has a surface pressure that is around 100 times less than that of Earth. It is much less dense. That causes the exact same wind speed of 100 km per hour to have much less lifting power on Mars compared to Earth. The Earth also gets dust storms. However, even the largest of these dust storms are not even as large as regional dust storms on Mars, let alone global ones. The areas that dust storms appear on Earth are usually the ones with fine soil. An example of an unusually large dust storm for Earth is the 2009 Australian dust storm. It lasted for two days. It was around 500 kilometers wide and 1,000 kilometers long. It was very clearly visible from space. The storm also reached some cities. So overall, the Earth gets smaller dust devils and smaller dust storms. However, despite dust devils being obviously much smaller on Earth, they can reach similar wind speeds to the dust devils on Mars. On Mars, it is known that they can reach top speeds of around 165 km per hour. However, the fastest dust devils on Earth, which are likely around the same wind speed, also likely then have more lifting power because of the greater atmospheric density. Although dust devils did cause deaths on Earth, that is still very rare. And on Mars, they are not only not dangerous, but they were even helpful at times because when they were passing over rovers and landers, they cleared the dust off of their solar panels. That allowed for them to get more power from sunlight. Dust devils are also one of the fastest, if not the fastest atmospheric phenomena in terms of wind speed on Mars. And yet, that wind speed, combined with Mars's atmosphere, is nothing compared to the fastest whirlwinds on Earth. In 1999, Bridge Creek, Oklahoma, United States, the most powerful recorded tornado appeared. The maximum wind speed reached about 484 kilometers per hour, and the tornado lasted for one hour and 25 minutes, which is abnormally long for a tornado. Although tornadoes are extremely powerful in terms of wind speed, they are not the most dangerous and destructive storms on Earth. That goes to tropical cyclones. Largely, that danger comes from the fact that they are much larger and last much longer. Even though their wind speeds are typically lower compared to tornadoes, they are still extremely fast. In this image is a view of the Hurricane Patricia. It is the most powerful tropical cyclone recorded in terms of wind speed at 345 kilometers per hour. And it also lowered the surface pressure at the sea level by around 14%, making it the second most powerful tropical cyclone in terms of how much it lowered the surface pressure at the sea level. To conclude, Mars gets bigger dust storms and dust devils than Earth, but they are not nearly as destructive as the most powerful storms and whirlwinds on Earth. Although dust storms and dust devils don't pose much of a danger on Mars, at least anymore, understanding these atmospheric phenomena on Mars better could also maybe lead indirectly to knowledge as to how to change the atmosphere of Mars such that it is suitable for habitation. <laughs>